Hey guys, Prague here with ESPN Esports. Just finished up Super Smash Brothers Melee Top 8 here at Evolution 2017. I'm standing with the one that walked away with the trophy, Armada. Now, Adam, you've done this before. This is your second time putting this trophy on your mantle. What's it like joining that, that echelon of players like Justin Wong, like Sonic Fox, like Mango, people who have won this chip more than once? Uh, it feels amazing, uh, of course. Uh, all these players you mentioned and plenty of others, uh, fantastic, uh, fine game players. So it's an honor to be up there with them. Uh, and for me personally, me and Mango, we have always uh, kind of compared each other uh, to the other one. And we're always competing like back and forth. So I really wanted this one to tie it up in uh, the EVO series. So uh, now it felt really, really good. And I'm very happy with my performance today. Definitely, and I think, you know, when we talk about legacy, a lot of people are saying you're the greatest of all time, but a lot of people always talk about what's going on with Melee here at Evolution 2017. You know, 10 years ago was the first time Melee was here, and Mango, third place in that. But here you are, 10 years later, six years at EVO. What is the legacy of Melee at EVO overall? Um, I feel like for Melee and probably a lot of other fighting games as well, EVO is kind of like partly what brings us all together. And I would also say for Melee, uh, at the time we uh, got back into EVO in 2013, we had the donation drive. Um, and at the time, most super majors were roughly around 300 people. Uh, and then EVO that year almost had 700 or around 700 at least. And last year it was like 2,400. So I feel like the Smash community have EVO and Travis, the guy that made the Smash documentary, uh, we have to thank these people a lot because without them, uh, this wouldn't have been possible. So thank you all uh, a lot. We really appreciate it. Now, when we talk about you know the top three, of course, you know all those players extremely well. And the other two have their coaches, Team Liquid's Crunch and of course Tafikins with Cloud9. Uh, what is, you know, do you have your own coach? Is it your brothers? And if not, you know, what, what's your view on mid-set coaching? Um, I would say pretty much I'm my own coach. Obviously, Andrew and I, we play a lot against each other. So, of course, sometimes he give me advice, sometimes I give him advice. But I guess that's everyone pretty much that plays with someone uh, pretty frequently. Uh, but to prepare for every specific opponent and stuff, uh, I have to do all of that work on my own. Um, the thing is, I don't mind uh, Smash having uh, people that are coaches. Dedicated coaches, right? Yeah. No, that's. I think it's actually good because it opens up more opportunities for other people. Uh, but I do not agree with mid-set coaching. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a bracket reset in grand finals, then I would maybe be okay with it, but mm -hmm. that's a, as far as I would go. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it comes down to how much you value adaptation. And I do feel like adaptation is such a crucial part um, of fighting games and a lot of other games for that matter. So I don't want to see mid-set coaching uh, ever again. That's my personal stand. And actually, we had a bit of fiasco with mid-set coaching earlier today. Uh, we had in the set between SFAT and Hungrybox a uh, quick set of, a quick round of coaching from from uh, Crunch, and then after the next match, we had uh, another player hop on stage and kind of mockingly coach SFAT. You know, not his actual coach, but someone just mimicking the actions and mimicking what Crunch was doing. And a lot of people are saying that, you know, we've seen, especially at EVO last year, there was the Ghost of Marvel on t on, uh, on stage. You know, is there like? As much as we herald the intimacy that comes with these events, is there ever like a bit of a concern that one day the wrong guy is going to hop up on stage? Um, I guess it could happen. Uh, I guess it all comes down to uh, security during mm -hmm. the event. Uh, maybe uh, strict punishes for people that break the rules. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, the, the safety of the players are very, very important. And mm -hmm. the more we grow, uh, the more people are going to be there, obviously. So and we're I don't know. know everyone, right? Yeah, maybe like make it clear that if you do run up on stage when you are not supposed to, then, I don't know, maybe ban... Ban from the series or something along yeah. those lines, yeah. But of course, you have to take it case to case basis. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, uh, something along the lines. Right. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, right. I'm not to that. Uh, of course, that's a decision that no one of us have to make, so. Yeah. And actually, you know, if you look at what happened, you know, SFAT was actually laughing about the coach because the person that we uh, saw run up there is, you know, Harold, a person in the community has been around for a very, very long time. In contrast, you know, last year with Chris G, people still don't know who that was. So, uh, but beyond that, you know, this has been a fantastic event. It's not done for you quite yet. Looking for gold on the fuse double circuit as well tomorrow. You and your brother, what's what's that like? You know, repping 
aligns with the pair area? Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's pretty much always been a dream uh, for us. Uh, so it's a dream uh, that came true. And I feel like for Andrew personally, it gives him so many more opportunities to play singles. And he, he had a pretty good run here at EVO oh, yeah. today. I do believe he got 25th, beating Dark Rain, Silent Wolf. He beat uh, uh, Shizwiz as well. If I Shizwiz as well. Yeah. And he took a game of Axe. Uh, so that's pretty good. Like I almost lost to Axe as well. Uh, so no, he, he did good and I feel like he's only going to keep improving uh, mm -hmm. more and more. Uh, people know him mostly for doubles. His awareness in teams is absolutely fantastic. Out of this world, yeah. yeah. I think it's arguably the highest mm -hmm. of anyone. Uh, at the very least top three. Right. Uh, so him getting more and more chances in singles as well, I feel like it's going to be so much fun playing uh, teams. It's going to be even more crazy. So I'm really looking forward to that, and we will do our best to uh, take uh, first place in teams tomorrow as well. Well, I mean, first place in singles is already a really, really good start. What's next for Armada? What's next for Adam Lindgren, you know? Uh, when it comes to Smash, uh, I said before the event, uh, I'm not going to come back to the U.S. until uh, the Utah event that happens the weekend before Big House. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still going to compete in Europe. I'm going to air. I'm going to syndicate. Uh, both tournaments having some American uh, people. People coming play. along, right? Yeah, so uh, I feel like that's very good for the European community. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to take it a little bit easy. Uh, probably go on a vacation with my girlfriend. Uh, take some time off. Uh, I feel like I, I've earned it. Just maybe. And of course, you know, talking about the European scene, a lot of people still sleep on Europe. You know, we don't get the same numbers in terms of viewership at events. But we know, you know, the talent level there is out of this world. You know, Amsa had a great run today. We know how good Leffen is. He had, you know, kind of fell short of, I guess, where he wanted to truly end up. Uh, Ice did fairly well as well, but it seems like there's still that kind of gap between uh, American viewership and the EU. You know, now that you are, again, defending Evolution Champion, what's going to take for uh, Europe to kind of get more eyes on it? Um, I feel like it's a lot of things. Uh... Like, the more good players you have, the more viewership you're going to get. That's simply how it works. Europe, we are kind of good, but we're far behind overall in terms of uh, player base, uh, great players, good players. Uh, so I feel like that's the main issues. I feel like maybe if we can work more on the relationship between America and Europe, so we have more Americans coming over to Europe more often, then I feel like that would boost up viewership. When mm -hmm. West Bowls came over, uh, Beast was having a really good uh, viewership, for example. His sets versus Leffen, both winners and losers, they're kind of iconic for a lot oh, of yeah, people. Definitely. Uh, people love West Bowls in Europe. He, he's, uh, he's a crowd favorite uh, as well. And even back in time, you know, when Mango and PPMD came over. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, every, every American uh, person or player that comes over, it's a huge help for the European community. And I think maybe they don't understand how important it is for the European community. Uh, like even within the US, we can see that certain regions, it's like way more popular, way bigger. Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. I feel like we need to like build everything else up that's not quite there yet. Uh, because if we want to have this game stick around for like 10, 15 years from now, mm -hmm. we can't rely on a few certain places. Uh, it has to be a, glo a global movement. Yeah. And for Smash 4, I'm, I'm actually a little bit jealous of that. It's a new game, so it's more understandable, but they have so many good players outside of the US oh, yeah. as well. You know, they have a huge contingent in Japan. We see what's going on with Europe. Uh, Mexico has great players. And, you know, we have pockets internationally, but not at that same level. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I would totally agree. Yeah. In Mail, it's more rare cases. In Smash 4, it's like very common. Right. And it's very fun to see because you never know, like, who is going to win, what country is going to win. And I feel like it adds more to the hype. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what, uh, how, how do you say, uh, like at Genesis 1, it was like Europe or Sweden against America. Right. So it brought a new flavor to the community. Right. And a lot of people love that. So right. then imagine if we had more players up there uh, from different parts of the world. Uh, yeah. I feel like it would be fantastic. And I hope it happens. Hopefully we continue to go globally, but of course, Congratulations once more. Thank you. And I'll see you, I guess, fairly soon. We cross paths fairly often. Yes. Stay tuned for more Evolution 2017 coverage here on ESPN Esports.